few days ago, 1000 recommended me to help illustrate a build process in the latest Bobby Duke video. I was really thrilled by the opportunity, as Bobby Duke is one of my favorite creators on the platform, and he really inspires me into everything I create. In the video, he created an incredible fantasy bow which is fully functional, and for that he used really nice tricks to create some of the shape of the bow, which is why he needed a 3D illustration to show the process better. I felt that this kind of small project would be interesting to follow for some of you, so this video will cover a bit of the process into making this happen. First, let's listen to the voiceover a few times to get the idea and rhythm. Since cutting them out only gave us the shape we need on one axis, we need to cut them from a second axis to give us a three-dimensional shape. The idea is to illustrate what the part would look like with the cut in only one direction versus two directions. For that, I will make two versions of the model illustrating the two steps. I create a blank wood piece to the dimensions of the one Bobby Duke used and create two materials for the end grain and sides with the texture from polygon.com matching the Spanish cedar he used. Now, just like the real part, I'm going to use the template to split the blank piece. After scaling the references, I use a knife tool to get my outlines. The same goes for the other cut profile, with a few tweaks, as the two templates are not from the same direction as the cuts, which is something Bob also had to take into account in the real version, which I mimicked here. And after creasing the sharp edges, I smooth everything with a subdivision surface modifier. Then I just need to use boolean modifiers to get the desired shape. And fix the UV unwrapping on the newly created faces. The topology is really bad, but it doesn't matter in this case. At this point, I wanted to fade out the scraps from the cut once they are away from the main part. So I added a mix shader node with a transparent shader and basically drove it with a spherical gradient, which takes its origin at the center of the part. For the background, I used my favorite trick of the moment, a simple backdrop with a plain desaturated color, quite far away from the subject, which gives nice gradient with the right lighting. Speaking of lighting, I used a few point lights to create a really nice rim light on the wood, and a field light so you can still see the shape of the part and the rest of the wood texture. And I need to switch between the two object sets when needed. For that, I create a new collection which will contain the instance objects and I instance the two collections containing my objects to the scene. That way, I can keyframe their visibility in the viewport and render. First, I animate the object with one cut. then the ones with the two cuts. At this step, it is basically done. I will just continue to play around with the rhythm, lighting and camera moves to emphasize the voiceover. At one point, I thought the shot with a single cut would not be clear enough so I experimented with a multicam view to switch between everything, but I found out it just goes too fast and becomes confusing. So as the final step, I decided to add some dust puff to illustrate the sawdust. Starting from the cut templates, I created thin profiles with normal facing outwards.
and after adding a domain and smoke simulation, I can keyframe the smoke flow to shoot right after the pieces are separated to simulate a dust puff. In the end, I used only this setup for the three different cuts and they worked out alright. The only issue is that Cycles is painfully slow to render volumetrics, even with my RTX card. So the final trick was to render the animation and smoke simulation in two different paths, using both Cycles and EV to get the best of both worlds. I rendered the object first, with the smoke sim hidden using Cycles, then switching to EV. After enabling volumetric shadows and increasing the resolution, I could re-enable the smoke simulation collection. And to just have the sim in a transparent background, I disabled the backdrop collection and put the object as holdout in order to render just the smoke that is in front of the objects. Change the output name and we are good to render this path. After a quick compositing in Premiere Pro, the final animation is done and ready to deliver to Bobby Duke. And I think he really liked the result. It was a fun small animation project with a few interesting pipeline tricks to learn from. And most of all, I think it goes nicely into Bobby's video. Thanks for the opportunity to work with you, Bobby, and I'm glad you liked the results. Thanks for watching.